Our contestants on American Idol and The X Factor get their style makeover for free. So I've come to see Britain's leading stylist, Nikki Hambleton-Jones, to get the lowdown on what you have to do to get your styling right. Five years as presenter of TV show 10 Years Younger and the success of her own personal styling business have made Nikki a household name. Britain's leading personal styling and lifestyle expert, her latest book, Top to Toe, was published last month, and she also has a weekly column in Celebrity Magazine Reveal. She is the face of Transition Lenses and style advisor for Freeman's Catalogues. Yeah, I mentioned your TV show 10 Years Younger, uh, and just for those of you out there that haven't seen it, we see the most extraordinary transformations on that show, uh, mostly women. But let's face it, Nikki, if I'm honest, they get free dentistry, facelifts, implants. But you know what? For me, the bit that always seems to work is when you choose the new clothes for them. So surely it's the clothes that matter, isn't it? Well, I think it's the whole package. But, you know, at the end of the day, you can have a facelift, you can have the best teeth in the world. But if you don't feel good in the clothes that you wear, you still look frumpy and you still really affect your confidence and self-esteem. So what I find is when I transform women, the minute you get them a new outfit, that's when they really see themselves through new eyes and actually start to believe that they can be someone different. Sure, I suppose so, yeah. I mean, on that programme, you sort of were dealing with lots of sort of, well, dare I say, older women and changing their lives, no question about it. But um, we've got artists on Fame Games that um, probably see people on The X Factor or American Idol getting their makeover for free and think, my God, how can I get one of those? I can't afford it. What's your kind of advice to them? At the end of the day, it's not about spending a fortune. It's about thinking about who do you want to be? Who's your target audience? What kind of image do you want to create? It's perhaps about spending a little bit of time on your outfits, but not necessarily money. You know, to people who look really good and have a great sense of style, it's not because they've thrown money at the problem. It's because they've put a lot of thought and preparation into their overall look. So if you've only got, say, $200 to spend, you could so easily go to street markets, charity shops. You know, we've got the top shop in the UK, and I think there's some top shops in the US as well, where you can get fantastic clothes at really affordable prices, enabling you to really change your look easily. So, so you think that, um, you know, all these artists, um, Nikki, are kind of like, you could be um, a rock band, they could be into R&B, uh, folk music, and, and they've got a maybe, maybe I'll give them a $200 package, or maybe I won't, for them to spend. And you think that they would possibly be able to use that money and make their clothes on stage for that? Yeah, I mean, I think first off, the most important thing is if you've got great talent and you make great music, that is fundamentally number one. And that's really going to win you the listeners. So most most important to focus on your music. Next thing is to think about, well, you've got to be true to yourself. There's no point, you know, trying to be a rock star if that's not who you are. Because then I think you just look awkward, it looks out of place, and you'll never pull it off. So you need to dress and have a style that represents who you are. You look at someone like Chris Martin from Coldplay, you never see him in more than a pair of jeans and a t-shirt. And it's cool, it's great. He's not trying to be who he is, and I think that's fundamentally really, really important. Then I think it's also a great idea is to think about what is your signature going to be? What is the one one thing you can do consistently, really affordably, all the time, so that people associate you with that. If you think of the lead singer of Stereophonics, you always see him in his, you know, leather jacket and sunnies. If you think of the lead singer of The Killers, he's always got feathers on his, you know, shoulder pads and things like that, you know. Or it could be that you're going to wear a hat or very strong glasses or something, you know. Develop a signature and then be consistent with that. And to be honest, it doesn't matter how attractive you are, but if you've got that signature, it becomes quite iconic. I guess if you're a guy in a pop band, it must be easy, actually, really, because you can just follow Iggy Pop and you don't have to buy any shirts. <laughs> well, exactly. I think it's a lot easier for men than it is for women. And I think men can get away with less. At the end of the day, you know, I think with boys, if you've got a great bod, quite frankly, no one cares what you put on it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> But, you know, historically, uh, music has always influenced fashion in a big way, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, fashion trends were usually born out of the music industry, particularly in Britain, you know, which was at the, the forefront of the music industry in the 60s and the 70s and even the 80s. And, you know, that was, you know, what led into fashion. You think of Madonna's looks, you know, in the 80s that was straight onto the catwalk and everyone was trying to replicate those. And, of course, in the 1970s, there was punk and then in the New Romantics in the 1980s. I mean, these were huge fashion movements. I mean, nowadays, I don't really think that sort of goes, does it? Because um, you can kind of wear anything. You mentioned, you know, the, the cold plays and stuff like that. I guess if you're in a, you know, if you're an opera singer, you expect, people expect you to stand up in a, in a, in a suit and stuff. But uh, what about people like uh, Lady Gaga and uh, Lily Allen? Do you think they are influencing today's fashion? Well, I think Lady Gaga and Lily Allen are, have, you know, are celebrities in their own right. And I think when there's such a crossover between, you know, music talent and celebrity talent these days. And I think if you have got a great profile in the industry and 
don't happen to have talent, then if you can develop a great look, that immediately transfers over into the high street. For instance, Liliana, when she went, was it last year when she wore a prom dress to an event? Yes. All of a sudden, we saw prom dresses on every high street, and it wasn't even on the catwalk. Um, so there can be huge influences on the fashion front. It doesn't necessarily mean they have to be particularly fashion forward, but it's because we follow their every movement and they become, you know, people look up to them. We want to be like them and that's how, what helps drive the fashion and retail sales. Okay, so so backwards to sort of uh, the, the, these guys, uh, Fame Games, what are we going to do for them? What do you think are your top three fashion tips you could give a Fame Games artist? I think number one, be true to yourself. Focus on your talent firstly and foremost and then worry about your image. I think the other thing is, you know, exercising is free and I think if you can maintain a fit physique, mm. you're going to go far. You know, the, you're going to get the girl fans. They're either going to be the ones who going to be who love the way you look as well as the way you sing and I think that also goes a long way to um, developing a good profile and then I think think about your signature what is that one thing that you can do that that makes you unique and that you can consistently deliver at every concert you you play at or whether it's interviews you give and, and it also becomes your trademark and I think once you've got a trademark then people identify you with that sure now Nikki you've, you've got a new book out haven't you tell us about that well my new book is called top to toe and it's basically um it's kind of pulls all the aspects because I, you know, I'm pretty much a lifestyle transformation agent. I guess top to toe is not just style tips. It's really tips on how you can completely change your life from exercising to eating to the way you look and also helping you develop that all important brand, personal brand. You know, what is that thing people are going to identify with you and remember you for? Mm. Uh, and you've got your own sort of personal stylist business now, haven't you? So can people just sort of walk into you and, uh, and get you to go out and buy clothes with them? Yeah, I mean, you know, NHA Style Consultancy, we've been running that for about eight years now and it's very much focused on helping men and women look fantastic effortlessly. Anyone is welcome. We'll do your wardrobe, we'll take you shopping, we'll give you a complete revamp, whatever it takes. I think, you know, looking good doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be expensive. And sometimes, you know, if you gave someone $200, it's better spending that with a stylist who can actually focus on their image and source what they need for them free, you know, because you can borrow and you can call things in, than it is to actually try and do it yourself when you haven't got a clue. I agree. So, Nikki, what's hot in fashion this year? Well, for spring, summer this year, it's really... The hot things to look at are fringing, lots of tassels, and that's for men and women, really. You can have a leather jacket with tassels under the arm, but tassels and fringing are huge. Um, blazer is a big staple. Again, men and women, you know, worn over lovely soft dresses or with men worn with, you know, jeans and things like that. Acid brights are huge and in a great way, again, to kind of set yourself apart because, you know, most musos, it's all blacks, dull, yeah. dumb, dumb. So you could go the other extreme and put a little bit of colour into your life, uh, into your look, shall I say, with like bright orange blue is a big colour trend the jumpsuit's huge I wouldn't maybe recommend that blokes go down that road but you know no. for women it's a very cool throwback from the 70s and you know a great look mm -hmm. Tell you what, Nikki, before you go, I've got to ask you this. You know, my mum and I, plus a few million other people, are kind of a bit worried about my brother Simon. I mean, he keeps see, you know, seems to be wearing the same clothes all the time. What advice do you have for him? Well, it's become a bit of the, the uniform, hasn't it? I mean, it's just that classic... Uniform? Black. It's black, black, grey, <laughs> grey. That's it. Uh, the odd white shirt, maybe, maybe thrown in. Yeah, no, uh, they're, they're mine. <laughs> OK. No, I mean, you know, Simon can get it pretty much, get away with it because he's Simon and he just doesn't care what anyone else thinks, but we all bored of that, quite frankly and we think that he's got enough money and he should invest some money in sorting out his look because that hairstyle something's got to be done I mean that wedge is just so yesterday and um, and I really think yeah his wardrobe needs to move on a bit of colour a bit of style you know he can do it come on of course he can I'm going to phone him up and tell him that Nikki thanks ever so much for coming on to Fame Games I really enjoyed talking to you thank you very much indeed thanks for inviting me fabulous thank you very much the global breakthrough chart on the red carpet.